Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm going to show you how simple it is to get an RFID reader and writer to work with an ESP32 microcontroller. I love working with the ESP32 series of microcontrollers. As you've probably seen if you watch videos on my channel, it's one of the ones that I feature most often. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use an SPI based RFID reader what you need to do to connect it and make it work properly on the ESP32, and how you can get reading those cards in just a few minutes. So without further ado, let's get at it. First thing we need to do is open the Arduino IDE and make sure that we have the correct library for the RFID sensor. Go to Manage Libraries, and then as it loads and refreshes the most up-to-date list, you can just type in RFID, and you'll find a selection of libraries that do have some RFID tie-in. As you scroll through, you can find different kind of options. For me, I'm going to find the one here called MFRC522. And if you don't have it installed, you're going to want to install it. I already have done that. There are some other options as well, and you can scroll through and see those. For the SPI based interface that we're using, that works great. If you're using I squared C instead, there are other libraries that are available for that. Once you've got the library installed, if you go to File and Examples, you'll be able to scroll down. For me, it's all the way near the bottom in the different libraries that are there, and find the one with the same name as the library that we just installed. In the example sketches, there's one called Dump Info, and this is basically just going to read all the information that it finds from a particular RFID tag and just display that in the serial monitor. So if you scroll through the example sketch, you can see here there's some information and there's some different pinouts that are available. But as you can see, they're all for different Arduino microcontrollers and not for the ESP32. In order to make it work with the ESP32, there's a little different pinout. And so I'm going to share that with you here. As you can see, Beyond the basic default SPI pins, there are two pins that you do need to note here, and that's going to be the RST, or reset pin, and the SS, or data pin, and we need to declare those. You can see I've put some values in here that are different than the default, and as we look at the ESP32 pinout, this one's available from the Random Nerd Tutorials website, you can see here that these light green pins are the ones that are related to SPI. There are some that are labeled HSPI, but the ones we want are VSPI, which are the MOSI, MISO, clock, and data pin. And they're found on pins 23, 19, 18, and 5. I've simplified the connection here in a table, and you can just see how to pair up pins from the RFID reader and the pin on the ESP32. So you're gonna supply 3.3 volts, not five volts. Ah, you need to declare a pin for the RST. I used pin 22, ground pin. Don't need to connect anything to the IRQ pin, and then the appropriate SPI pins as listed. Once you load that sketch to an ESP32, you can see that we need to open a serial monitor and prepare, making sure that it's the same baud rate as what the serial begin command was, which is 9600. If I put a tag on there, you can see it loads a bunch of information, which are all the different blocks of data that could be stored on a particular tag, and even if a lot of those are by default not used. At the top of this whole block of data, there is what they call the card UID number, the universal identification number, and that's going to be a set of four different characters in a hexadecimal format. If you apply a different RFID tag, this time a white card, you're going to see another block of data with different identifying numbers. And if we scroll back up to the top, we're going to see a different UID number. That's because each RFID tag has its own ID number. If you remove the tag before it completely reads, you can see that it's interrupted. You only get those first couple blocks and then it moves and the rest of them fail. That's okay because in most cases you're just going to authenticate the ID number and you won't really need to get all of the data off. In that case, if you do, you're going to take different precautions. On the Random Nerd Tutorials website, there's a great tutorial here and just kind of lays out everything that you would need to put in. For the sample sketch for the Arduino IDE, the sample sketch works without hardly any modification. We just need to declare those two pins. If we've hooked it up according to the connection table that I listed, everything should work perfectly. Exactly. 
So here I just copied that sketch into an Arduino IDE window and I need to declare those two pins, the data pin and the RST pin like we did before. Otherwise everything else is just the way it was in the tutorial. In the setup you load just a few different things and in the loop they do a couple proofs to see if there's actually a card at the reader. The if not functions cause it to check to see if there's a new card present and if not it's simply just going to repeat the loop. If there's no serial data being read then it's also going to return and just do the loop. However if those two things are both true then it's instead going to print out a UID tag number and then work on the formatting of the ID number. This is just to identify which card is actually being applied. So you can see here that for loop goes character by character recording it and formatting it properly in the hexadecimal format so that it can be easily recognized and referred to later on. After that formatting is done, we get into the actual meat and potatoes of it, which is what do we do once we know what that string is and how do we deal with it, whether it matches the one that we've set or not. You can choose which ID card you want. I've chosen the blue tag here. So you can see when I applied the white card, I get an access denied. When I apply the blue tag instead, I get an access authorized. And looking back at the code here, you can see this is the place where you're going to put in the ID card that you want to be authorized. Of course, you could add or statements as well, which would allow you to have more numbers available or make more convoluted variables. And then here in this section where they've printed authorized access, put a delay. This is where you could put any code that you wanted that would be triggered once the correct card has been applied. When the wrong card's applied, that's where you would put in this section. You might not want to use the delay. It kind of depends how quickly you want it to repeat and check. I found three seconds does feel a little long when it comes to testing, but if you were using it in a real world application, it would probably make sense. So there you can see how easy it is using the default libraries even and the example sketches in order to get an RFID card being scanned authenticated, and then do whatever you want with it by putting additional code in that's going to trigger when the correct card is read. I've got a bunch of escape room puzzles that I'm going to be basing off of this RFID technology, and I really like it much more than something like magnets or magnetic switches because it's not generic, it's specific to that particular device. So you can't just swap out another item that's similar that has an RFID card in it. It has to be the right ID on the tag or it just won't work. How are you going to use RFID tags? Let me know in the comments or send me an email. My information is in the description below. If you'd like to see how to use RFID tags in other ways, maybe how to write information to them, or other configurations where you might have multiple readers and that kind of thing, let me know and I'd be happy to make a video about it. The technology is really incredible. It's become so cheap and it's used in so many things we don't even realize sometimes all of the things that we use in it. I hope that serves as inspiration and a great building block for your own projects. And if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, engage, and let me know what kind of content brought you here and what you'd like to see more of. I post a new video every weekend, so be sure to check back regularly. And I've got a lot of different interests. I'm sure some of them will interest you as well. Until next time in all your DIY projects, swipe, swipe, authenticate, and don't be afraid to be balder.